Some of us wonder what role public media plays in today's world. Doesn't the market provide all the information we could want? Well, not always. There are still some empty stalls in the marketplace of ideas. Sometimes, what's missing is credible and hard-won information about local government and community challenges. Sometimes, what's missing is a way to sift through different perspectives and connect citizens around common problems. That's where your public media should come in. Your media, your platforms, not beholden to shareholders or advertisers, not vulnerable to commercial terms of service, just there to inform and engage you, to inspire you. What could public media be to you, and how could it connect you with your world? To see how this might work, let's imagine the Cardozo family. Jenna is married to Jose. They live in Cityville with their three kids, Liz, 10, and the twins, Max and Carla, who just turned 17. Like many of us, Jenna grew up on public broadcasting. We might even call it first-generation public media. Her local PBS channel offered Jenna programming that commercial media didn't. Kids shows, science coverage like Nova, her first exposure to dance, and thoughtful, critical news. Public media has changed a lot, along with the rest of the world. Jenna's next-gen public media delivers programming over all sorts of devices, and the local station is producing a lot more coverage of Cityville, working with local schools, community organizations, and other partners. Jenna's also accessing programs and apps produced by other outlets in other communities. There's no shortage of media available to Jenna, but there are still some kinds of content that Jenna can only get from public media. And there are ways that public media alone operates to help Jenna educate her kids and connect with her community. Jenna starts her day with public radio. She listens to a podcast on her mobile phone at the gym, the radio live in her car on the way to work, and streaming on her computer at work. A lot of the content comes from NPR, but a lot also comes from the local public radio station, which is the only radio station in Cityville that covers local and state issues seriously. The station also provides a platform for new content coming from startups in the area. Jenna trusts public media because of the producer's efforts to be fair and accurate. Jenna often shares stories with friends. Sometimes she's even a source for stories that deal with things she knows about. The Public Insight Network coordinates input from citizen experts to deepen reporting. So far, Jenna has contributed information about grocery shopping in the recession, her experience as a biologist with stem cell research, and commuting challenges. In other words, public media can catalyze and curate amateur content so that it's most useful to others. Jenna and Jose's kids have formed a different relationship with public media as well. PBS Kids Online is a favorite of their youngest child, Liz, who just won an award at the science fair for her project on recycling. She got interested by watching a documentary in school called Garbage Dreams. Her teacher used related teaching tools from Teacher's Line to explore the issue in class, and Liz played the Garbage Dreams game on her mom's phone. Then she came up with ideas for her own recycling system. The Cardozo's other daughter, Carla, discovered a public media film called Not In Our Town about bullying. Through its website, Carla became friends with Jorge and Jamal, who had been bullied in a school across town. Together, they used the Not In Our Town website's tools to organize a Not In Our Town Cityville. This got students, teachers, and parents talking about how they can address bullying at school. Max is the techie in the family. He joined the Public Media Corps After School Digital Media Arts Club and learned how to build an app to help kids find and create after-school programs. Thanks to distribution through the local public radio station site and related networks, Max's app has spread to communities nationwide. 
more than 100,000 people have downloaded it and others are building on his app. The kid's Uncle Jim is stationed in Iraq. While there, he saw a program made by the national documentary series Frontline called The Wounded Platoon. It shows how combat affects the lives of soldiers. Frontline made all of its related materials and reporting available online. It also created a discussion board. Because of Frontline's credibility and the quality of its content, the board attracted lively participation. That's where Jim met other soldiers like himself and found a rich context for sharing with others. Jose is into music. After he lost his job a few months ago, he found comfort in listening to his favorite podcast, Sound Opinions. He's also started to listen to StoryCorps, which provides a platform for people to interview one another about their lives. This gave Jose the idea to do some of his own interviews with men and women in his area who are also looking for work. Jose uploads those stories to PRX, an online marketplace for independent producers to share content with public radio listeners and stations. PRX curates the content. It lets everyone know that the material is worth their time. It's pretty cool because Jose's interviews have now been heard on blogs and radio stations all over the country. A piece even made it onto Remix Radio, which airs selections from PRX on satellite radio all over the world. Jose wants to understand what's being done in the local economy to deal with unemployment. What's the strategy? Who's done what? No blogger seems to know, and his commercial media hasn't devoted the resources to finding out. His local public radio station has put reporters on the subject, though. And a startup news site, Cityville Online, is partnering with the station to match jobs and job seekers. What the Cardozo family scenario shows is how the public broadcasting you grew up with can become part of a next-gen public media network, still focused on high-quality educational content, but also on local information and platforms for innovation. This is already happening in some places. Many public media institutions get it. They get that it's their job to provide well-told stories of interest to a diverse population, distribute them freely, and give people the tools to express their own perspectives. It is their job to help people convert raw information into real value in their lives. Making this happen more broadly, so that all Americans will have next-gen public media that works for them will require a sustained investment and coordination. It will take a shift to new networks, new infrastructure, new approaches to content, curation, and engagement to build on what has been and realize what could be. How do you imagine such a new public media network could best serve you? Many of us are now debating this question Join the discussion.